Many had believed that Grozny's presidential palace would by now be a smoking ruin. But instead, this morning, the Chechen vice president, Zemlihan Yandabiev, was leafing through telegrams of support, including several from separatist movements in other regions of Russia. In spite of last night's deadline, Russian planes did not bomb the capital. And down in the square, Chechen nationalists were able to hold their normal prayer meeting, though the number of those willing to stand out in the open had plainly dwindled. At noon, the deployment of an armored vehicle signaled the imminent arrival of President Jokar Dudayev from his safe house away from the city center. The general arrived unobtrusively in a station wagon, the best way his security men believe to protect him from Russian attack. Moments later, Dudayev gave ITN an exclusive interview in which he said that he would never bargain away Chechnya's claim to independence and that he personally is not afraid to die. I feel fear only before Almighty God. I fear nothing on earth. I am preparing to meet the Almighty with a clear conscience and an unstained uniform. Fighting has now erupted in a village just north of Grozny. A Chechen anti-aircraft gun stood by helplessly as Russian tanks blasted Chechen positions a little way ahead. Even in the area still in Chechen hands, there was tremendous tension as the troops prepared to face a possible armored attack. The Russians seem to be making a determined push to take this village on the outskirts of Grozny. What we don't know yet is whether this marks the beginning of their major offensive against the capital. Further back, volunteers wearing the green headbands of a martyr to Islam headed for the front. They still face the threat of an aerial blitz or even all-out combat with the Russian army. But no one we met is ready to give up. Julian Mannion, ITN, Grozny.